I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. Welcome to another episode of Clearly. I'm very excited to announce my guest today. She is my friend, Mayor Rochelle Robinson of the City of Douglasville, and you're going to get a chance to learn more about her, what she has planned for the City of Douglasville, and learn why the growing wonderful relationship she has with Douglas County is working. Mayor Robinson, thank you so much for joining the and taking the time out of your busy schedule yes, to join us. And I know you're extremely busy. Yes, uh, we both chat often on how busy we are, <laughs> but we also talk about how we what we love to do. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your family. And yes, ma'am. Well, um, I am originally from Ohio, mm -hmm. but I've been in Georgia for. This is my 23rd year. Oh, wow. So I say I'm a Buckeye with the Peach Corps. Yes. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really enjoy uh, being in Douglasville. And um, I have two, three children, two at home. One's in college. My son is a freshman oh, at Georgia Southern. Joel, boo-hoo, my buddy. <laughs> and so he's in Georgia Southern in his freshman year. And I have two daughters at uh, Douglas County High School. One, the juniors in the IB program, mm -hmm. and my sophomore, Anna, is in AP in dual enrollment. So very excited about that. My husband and I have been married for uh, 23 years this year. Cool. And so we're just, he's a Georgia boy. Good. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, and you know you're jo from Georgia if you were born in Grady or Crawford Long, I think it is. Yes. So he's a Grady baby. He's a Grady baby. Yes, and he's second generation uh, born in, in Georgia in the Atlanta area. So he plucked me up out of uh, Maryland over 20 years ago and made me a peach. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> You just told me where you're from. Yes, and, um, it, uh, What school did you attend, and, mm -hmm. and how did you get into politics? Tell me a little bit about that. Wow, that's a different story, huh? Yes. So um, I lived in Maryland. I went to the Army National Guard after high school. And we're Army and, sisters. And we're Army sisters of Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Yes. And so you were the inaugural class, I believe. Well, that was the second class. So the I feel second like, class. Yes, uh, for women in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, mm -hmm. to be in that second class is certainly uh, history. Yes, ma'am. So I try not to discuss that uh, so often, <laughs> but yes, thank you for reminding me. Yes, ma'am. So thank you for paving the way. And so I did my basic training in AIT in Fort Jackson. Yes. Uh, Bravo 1-1 one, one, and my uh, MOS was 71 Lima, which is changed, all this stuff has changed because I'm, you know, back in the day, old school yes. from Fort Jackson, but um, I went to school there, I mean, went to the Army training there to pay for college on the GI Bill, so yes. I went to Youngstown State University in Ohio, oh, and after great. college, worked for the Central Intelligence Agency. I was still in the Army, and so, um, you know, your senior year when you have all these job fairs and tables are sitting out there, and so I had gone by this table and it said CIA and I said the real CIA not the Culinary Institute of Arts but <laughs> yes. the Central Intelligence Agency in DC in Washington and so I filled out an application because that was part of what I'd done in the um, military in the National Guard and was recruited and worked in DC for about eight years lived there and traveled and lived in different parts of the world and you know, so that was very interesting, and I can't really talk about a whole lot of what yeah, I've done. Yeah, the CIA, <laughs> I understand. It's a secret code, yeah. so we, I won't belabor that anymore. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tell me a little bit about your po political experience. I know you oh. were a city councilwoman yes, prior to becoming mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you came fully loaded when you entered office. You certainly were not a neophyte. Mm -hmm. Yes, Can you tell me a little bit about your political experience and just some of the great things that you mm -hmm. have experienced while serving? Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share that. I um, really, I think my roots, there was a seed planted in me from years ago with my mother. Uh, my mother grew up during the time of the movement, they called it, yes. <laughs> with Dr. King. And so um, in our home, we had an array of people that would come by. So sh they would have meetings and it had um, people from the civil rights movement, uh, clergy, 
uh, the Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. uh, Muslims. I learned how to eat bean pie. <laughs> and so I just, you know, would sit around and sneak and go upstairs. And she said, go downstairs in the basement and play. And I'd come to the top of the stairs from the basement and listen to those conversations. So I think that that kind of put a seed in me. And then when I was 10 years old, my mother said, we're going to march on the Board of Education. And I had a sign. And I said, well, Mommy, why are we going to the Board of Education? And she said, we need equality in books. And it wasn't my school. So when we got to the place, you know, to the Board of Education, I saw all these people. And I thought, so I, you know, whispered in her ear, Mom, that's not my school. And she said, it doesn't matter if, you're, if it's your school or not. If it affects one person in the community, it affects us all. And so that really was, I think, a spark that was planted in me for uh, politics. And oh, wow. when I moved to Georgia with my husband, I was getting my hair done with uh -huh. uh, Annetta Danley. Oh, yes. And, yes. And Mr. Homer Danley was the first African American to serve on the Douglasville City Council. Yes. And so she said to me, you're very astute. You know, you, you seem like you know what's going on. You should run for council. And I said, nah, politics and church, they don't mix. Uh -huh. But I ran for city council along with Commissioner Henry Mitchell yes. at the time. He and I ran together to represent Ward 3. It's a super ward, and yes. we both won that seat in 2001 and served, you know, for politics there on the council. And I got pregnant with my baby Anna, so I finished my term and uh -huh. said that was it. But then I, you know, decided to run again, thinking well, that I had something to contribute. Wow. You know, we both are middle children. Uh, of course, <laughs> uh, we know that with that comes the title of being resilient. Yes. And uh, we are the balancing act mm -hmm. between our siblings, and they would probably beg to differ with us. <laughs> uh, our, your mother's name is Hattie. My mother's name is Maddie. That's we right. We just have so much in common. <laughs> we do. Tell me a little bit about some of your, some things that you've had to deal with in mm -hmm. politics that, that, that you would like to I, be, I consider yourself a game changer. What have mm -hmm. you done? I, I'll, I'll kick off with our 2017. Uh, 2017, we've mm -hmm. heard the pundits say, was is the best year ever yes. in the history of Douglas County. And it's an mm -hmm. honor to be with you yes, on this great moment. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about that. When we both heard the news, we <laughs> looked like two flowers who opened I up. I know it. We were so excited. <laughs> and that was announced in the Development Authority. And of course, there were their game changers around the table. And uh, that announcement was just, it really gave me a boost. Um, and I think that, like you're saying, being a middle child, you learn how to negotiate. Yes. And so um, not being an oak tree that you'll bend and break, but a palm tree that you can bend down and come back up. And so I think those are some of the things that have made us successful, that we're both willing to listen. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother you know, would say, you have one mouth and two ears, so listen twice as much as you talk. And I think that's really made a difference. Not to say that that had not happened in the past, but I think the climate is just prepared um, when your leader is able to listen and yes. try to negotiate with council members and everyone in the community, it makes a great difference. And mm -hmm. I think that's what made us successful. So us together, it's a team. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, economically, uh, Douglasville and Douglas County is growing. And yes. we've had, uh, I said the whole place is uh, under construction. Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about some of the new businesses that are coming here. Uh, and then I'll, I have a couple other questions for you. But tell me about the new businesses mm -hmm. definitely have been under the city's leadership that are coming. And mm -hmm. can you talk about a few of those for us? Yes, ma'am. We're Panera Bread. Yes. One of those ones that you and I said we're going to, every time we go by, there's a large line, a long line, but I've finally been able to go into Panera Bread, and it's delicious. Yes. And so we have chains that have been coming into the city um, on Highway 5, and in that old Kroger, not Kroger, I apologize, Kmart shopping plaza. Mm -hmm. We have Burlington Coat Factory and Bills, and there's another one coming there, but it's a, it's a three-part, you probably remember because Home you're Goods. Home Goods, there yes. you go, Madam Chair. Yes, Home, Home Goods. Goods is there. So we have those chains, and then we have private entities as well. Blue Rose uh, Art Bistro is yes. in the downtown area, and it's mm -hmm. a quaint, um, a little bistro. They have food, light food that they serve, but their art is phenomenal. And so those are some of the things that have been coming into the city. And of course, we have a downtown master plan that we're uh, hoping to implement soon. Um, we're just trying to get all the pieces in place and so that will change the trajectory of downtown. And you know, the, the city's in the county. Mm -hmm. So what's good <laughs> for the city is good for the county. Yeah. 
I remember visiting visiting the annual chili cook-off oh. and um, had an opportunity. You opened it up and I closed. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, tell me what the county citizens may feel, uh, find interesting in the chili cook-off. I like the chili. I'm yes. a chili hound and a buff. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think it, how that has benefited uh, uh, Douglasville and Douglas County at large. Yes, ma'am. It's, um, it's sponsored by the Cultural Arts Council, which is, a, of course, is a partner with the city and the county. Mm -hmm. And we support them both financially um, as entities, government entities and private entity. But downtown, first of all, the, the plaza is renovated. So it's a new plaza. We, the iconic Fountain is gone, but we have a new fountain, and it lights up with different colors. Oh, and yes. <laughs> and so what people will find when they go there is a more open space that's more friendly and walkable mm -hmm. um, that it, than it has been in the past. But the chili is phenomenal. The entertainment is really good. So uh, when you come, it's around uh, Halloween time. Mm -hmm. So we have a Halloween contest. We have dancers. Uh, people sing. It's just a great family time, and getting that chili is on a cold fall night is the best. It's just coming out for harvest and, and celebrating family, which is really good. Wow, it is. I, I mm -hmm. love chili. I, I think <laughs> I probably had more bowls than we sold, but <laughs> it was excellent. Um, also, it was a pleasure riding with you uh, yes. doing the uh, Veterans Parade here, yes, which is hosted by the county, and mm -hmm. I thought that was an honor for both of us to, who have served, mm -hmm. and we understand the significance of serving, and I really appreciate you uh, actually doing that with me. Thank but you. also, I just wanted to touch bases a little bit about uh, economic development. You know, you and I are just, we just want them. We said, you <laughs> know what, right. come on in. If, you know, when they start <laughs> saying we, we want to move to Douglas County and Douglasville, we immediately stop and drop and say so we right. definitely want to, what do we need to do to bring businesses here. That's Talk right. about, I believe you have Civil Line that's going on, mm -hmm. that's coming up off that Bright Star. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that? That's, that's it's, I'm just, every time I ride by, I say, wow, look at Douglas. <laughs> Field grow. Yes, ma'am. It's exciting. Silver Line, of, of course, is Anderson Windows, mm -hmm. and they're located out in the tributary area, area, but they've expanded their operations, and they're bringing that to the Bright Star Connector. Wow. And so it's going, they say eventually it'll be 500 jobs. So um, we're just excited about growth. We're exci excited about manufacturing, and it's something that America can put their hands around. Not everyone is meant for a four-year um, institution for college. Um, right. There are some technical trades and just work ready, and we need to be prepared to offer jobs to everyone in the community. So that's exciting to have Silver Line come. And there are other small businesses, Mattress uh, Discount, is coming to refurbish there on Douglas wow. Boulevard. Yes, there was a um, package store near the Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. and so they've come for an application, and they were approved to take the package store down and to put a mattress uh, discount place there. So, you know, just trying to fill the empty boxes. Oh, yeah, and that's amazing. Sometimes, you know, put a little makeup on can help brighten you up, so. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> Uh, workforce, workforce development mm -hmm. is one that's near and dear to both of our hearts. Yes, we at ARC, we are mm -hmm. always with our pom poms saying, hey, right. how can we uh, bring businesses to Douglas mm -hmm. County and also jobs for our citizens who are locally. Mm -hmm. um, we have definitely made it very clear with our economic development team and mm -hmm. the workforce development that we certainly want to make sure that our that our citizens here mm -hmm. are recognized for new jobs. Can you tell me um, what what are you looking for in 20? 18 in terms of just taking that professional mm -hmm. uh, workforce development uh, a step ahead. I believe you talked about maybe having the the uh, van or the yes. little mobile unit yes, come in front of the city because mm -hmm. you say you want to make sure that there's an opportunity because that is very walkable. A lot yes. of people walking by. So you can mm -hmm. you talk about your vision there or? Yes, ma'am. The conference center has a great walkability, as you've said, across the street from the city hall and the old plaza. And so we've asked the workforce development team to come there once a month or once a quarter um, to provide services. And we know that they're connected with um, the state and with ARC in providing jobs in mm -hmm. Douglas County and all over. And so for the first time last year, I hosted, um, in conjunction with Mercer University, a jobs fair. And we had about 80 vendors there that, you know, right on site, taking resumes, offering positions. And so we'll do that again. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're partnering with the county this time. Yes. Yes. So we'll, we'll do that at the same time so that people, you know, if they, have to, if they have a job that they're underserved or underpaid or just want to do something different, they won't have to come out more than one time because the city the county and uh, economic, economic development along with Mercer is going to host a jobs fair. 
And I so, like that concept with yes, us unifying and it allows mm -hmm. all of us to be in one place. And then also it, it allows more companies and vendors to be in one room. Exactly. And so I believe uh, it's first Fridays or Thursdays, something. Um, yes, ma'am. It, but it allows all of us to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. You are so community oriented and dedicated. Oh, uh, you. You're like me. Some days mm -hmm. you, you may get one hour of sleep <laughs> and then you may get eight. It just That's depends. Right. <laughs> what is your biggest joy? Oh, wow. With being a mayor of Douglasville. I have to think about that. There's so many. There's a long list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but really, it's people. Yes. You know, um, you don't do it for certainly um, resources because you can't do any job that you're paid for if you're doing the job to get paid. I mean, right. and, and, and what, what I say and I mean by that is you'll never make enough money if you don't like what you're doing. That's right. And so um, that isn't my motivation. My vo motivation really is people and making a difference and having this community turn for generations. And so my biggest joy is when I'm somewhere like at Publix or something and someone will say, you're doing a good job, young lady, keep it up. Yes. Or at Rotary Club, some of my members will say, you're not in the paper today for <laughs> stay out of the paper. Yes. So uh, my biggest joy really is seeing the impact little by little and just getting encouragement along the way. Not that I live for that, but it's good um, when someone notices even, for example, on Highway 92, um, on the north side of the tracks, the, we have West Strickland Street as part of the historic district, and we mm -hmm. always had Christmas decorations there yeah. on Strickland and Main Street, Church Street, um, Campbellton Street, because those are the historic downtown, Fairburn Road, Fairburn Road. But this time we went across 92 and took the decorations all the way down to Jesse Davis Park. And people were so excited. You know, they said, Mayor, this is the first time I've been here for years and years. And I felt that I was part of the city because you had de Christmas decorations on my on Highway 92. Now, that's very small, but it just shows that people are paying attention. And when you, people don't care how much you know until, you know, they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to feel Campbellton Street is uh, Highway 92 that turns into Chapel Hill. It's the same street. It just depends on, you know, which area you're driving. So while we had decorations on Campbellton, you know, I thought it was appropriate to have decorations on Highway 92 as well. So those are my biggest joys, impacting people. Wow. <laughs> you know, well, we both have certainly carried the torch uh, with the youth community and, mm -hmm. and also our seniors. Um, oh, wow. We both were principals <laughs> for a day at the yes. high schools. Uh -huh. You have a high schooler. Mm -hmm. I have a teacher in the, yes, high school. in the high school, and um, we really promote that aspect mm -hmm. of life. And seniors, I throw a birthday party once a month, and then you oh, know wow. we go to the senior mm -hmm. picnic. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's in May every That's year, and celebrate mm -hmm. our seniors. We both had an opportunity to honor both our oldest uh -huh. uh, male and female senior this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, and you know, I know. Uh, I told someone, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm checking the boxes, and of course, you know, my <laughs> days are, I'm already a senior, but perhaps I don't feel like one. And don't look but, like one either. But with that being said, <laughs> tell me what your plan and your vision for mm -hmm. enhancing the lives of two, two mm -hmm. uh, populations, that youth population, which mm -hmm. you are just so well involved in, all the school, PTA mom, I'm just pleased. <laughs> well, and then you. from the senior component. Yes, ma'am. Well, of course, from young people, um, and in this era, I think sometimes we can be apathetic and youth might think it doesn't make a difference and they hear all these things about them being technology and you know technologically sound and not having people skills, but I think, I beg to differ, I think if you take time out with them that they really can give back. And as you said, we were both principal for the day. I went to 22 schools wow. last year, El elementary, middle, and high, you know, speaking for Black History Month, for graduations, and yes. just any time I'm asked if I can fit it in the schedule, I try to attend. And it doesn't matter if it's in the city or the county or it's Chapel Hill, the Church of Chapel Hill, private school. It doesn't, I just go and try to encourage kids to let them see that really, first of all, women, Mm -hmm. um, this is not a field politics that you would normally traditionally see women and see African-American women. Yes. And so just to let those little girls know that any job, military, um, nursing, yes. teaching, instructing, being in politics is open for you if you, you know, you pursue it and work hard. So um, 
first of all, trying to be a role model for kids, and then, like you said, PTA, I'm a band booster mom, <laughs> IB mom, my son was on the swim team. So doing that, interacting with parents, trying to stay connected with the teachers and principals so that we can talk to the superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, I just went to the mayor's conference in Atlanta Friday oh. through, just got back last night, mm -hmm. and I attended the youth um, council. Oh, and wow. so I've talked to my city manager and we are going to have a youth advisory council. Mm -hmm. And we're mimicking you, like you said, competition. <laughs> we are mimicking the county to have an internship program. So that was rolled wow, out last week. Wow, that's so exciting. Yes. I, we had a ball last year with our interns, and we're mm -hmm. planning on rolling it out again this year. Very because good. Because it's, it's a, I'm just enjoying enhancing the lives of our of our future, the yes, youth. And I said, you all are going to take this wheel that's right. one day, so we're getting them, get prepared, them prepared and want to make sure they're prepared for to, to take the lead on so many initiatives. Mm -hmm. So therefore, seniors. And seniors, and oh, seniors, I oh, I love, love seniors. They have so much wisdom, and mm -hmm. they make you see la. They make you slow down <laughs> <laughs> and just relax and take one day at a time, yes. which is good sometimes because you're, you, know, you don't stop and smell the roses or be present in the moment, but they will make you present in the moment. Oh, and yes. that wisdom that they have is just, it's more than just having silver hair, it's having something to say that's imperative. So I really listen to them, but for seniors, just to really meet their needs, we need senior housing, additional yes, senior housing. Absolutely. So we're working on that in the city of Douglasville because there's a list um, of seniors where they, you know, they don't have options. And so we need to provide better options for them. Mm -hmm. they, they have to go to Carrollton or some other county if we don't have adequate housing here, which we, we know we don't. That's a, a survey that was taken. Mm -hmm. So supporting seniors in housing and transportation and in their medical needs. I served on the Wellstar Hospital Board for about five years, so yes. I have a great relationship with Craig Owens, who is the director and CEO of Wellstar. Yes. So he and I are at Rotary together and just trying to stay connected with seniors, but really helping the seniors with their taxes, you know, non-exempt for their taxes yes. and having a discount with their water bill, supporting legislation that will help their lives to be easier because I know a lot of them are on fixed incomes mm -hmm. and they have to really, as my great-grandmother said, your money has eyes, but it can't see, so you have to see for your money. So just to help that's, them. That's true. <laughs> help and them manage their, their finances and have enough adequate money to do what they need to do during the week and stuff. I agree. Um, <laughs> I, I love the seniors as well. You know, we both sit on the ARC mm -hmm. boards, both the t uh, transportation person mm -hmm. and then of course we have our individual boards. Yes, and on that senior board, I, um, I it's the, the Big Ten. And wow. uh, you know, it's 10 counties in that mm -hmm. room. And of course, we all are vying for That's specific right. things for our seniors, and it's been such a joy. Uh, yesterday, Richard Hagen, who's our Director of Senior Services, mm -hmm. said, Chairman, you can tell you've been down there making some noise. We oh, have, we great. are getting an additional $63,000 this year for our Meals on Wheels programs oh, for goodness. a minute. Uh, the report came out last year that my seniors may be affected, and I said, absolutely mm. not. So I've been Thank at the table you. at every turn for the seniors of Douglas County at Thank large. you so much. So that is just thank you for what you do. Now I want to talk about Pivot to Challenges. Yes, ma'am. What do you uh, see most challenging in your role? Ooh wee, let me see. There's a long list of those things too. <laughs> the, the joys and the challenges. One of the joys is the government moves very slowly. Yes. And you've been in private sector. Uh -huh. And you want it to happen. When you say it, it's like, <laughs> boom, magic. But in government, it takes some time because you have to vote and legislation and policy. And um, not that those things aren't important because we need checks and balances. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it just seems like from the time you have an idea or you try to implement something, it's like a ship liner. It just goes very slow. So that's a challenge when you're excited and you know things need to change and you want them to change. I think that's the thing that really can frustrate me at times right. is that um, things take a long time to get into place and to move forward. So that's my challenge is that and um, mindset. Yes. You know, people, they might be afraid of what they don't know. Um, I don't have a hidden agenda. What you see is what you get. I don't have <laughs> time for all that. Life is too short. But I have found, of course, in life over these 50 plus years I've been here that some folks do have hidden agendas. and so praying and asking God to give me wisdom so I'll know the difference. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, being authentic with people, and it's a challenge when people are not authentic with me. Yeah. So that's it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I want to commend you for oh. all the great things you're doing Thank for the city you. of Douglasville. You have set standards where others will be judged, and wow. it is an honor Thank for me you. to be, just to, for us to work together. Yes, this collaboration has been, uh, it, it's a, it exceeded the expectations yes, of all the citizens here mm -hmm. in Douglas County. They see that two, uh, I call us two Army veterans That's joined right. at the hip mm -hmm. who will go down in history for mm -hmm. making a dif difference in this county. And we yes, have been on the same page. Do we agree on everything? Absolutely not, but right. we always come in agree to an agreement on a consensus. And for the most part, everything is, yeah, sounds yeah. good to me, <laughs> because we're so open-minded. We That's listen right. That's right. and we love people. That's and when right. you do that, you can listen be beyond. You, you get all mm -hmm. the noise out your ear and you, mm -hmm. get, you get out the weeds That's right. and you listen to uh, from a high level level uh, perspective just yes, to mm -hmm. hear and, the, and to discern. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I really want to say that openly on my TV oh, show that uh, I really enjoy working with you. Thank you. And uh, I, you, you are such, such a gracious person. You know, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, it can be intimidating. You have things in front of your name and behind, but <laughs> you are such a down-to-earth person, and it's genuine. You're, it's uh, such an honor and grace. Your grace is like um, Mrs. Obama and Grace Kelly. It's just, it precedes you, and it leaves an impression when you leave the room. So it's been an honor to work with you as well. Thank you so much, Mayor. This has been a <laughs> wonderful interview. Yes, ma'am. And just keep doing the great things that you all are doing at the city. And, yes, and also we look for, uh, forward to the uh, con collaboration, Yes. the comprehensive plan that that's we're working right. on together. That's, right. Every, that's historic, this plan, yes. because that's never been done. And we're, we're mirroring our ordinances. So we're business yes. friendly. We're open for business. Yes. And we want people to come and let it to be um, a seamless you know, meet all the markers and do what you're supposed to do, but we don't want to have different requirements in the city and the county, so our zoning and ordinances, um, they're talking to each other now, and we're trying to mirror that in conjunction with the comprehensive plan and our service delivery strategies. We're just, we're trying to make government um, more accessible for the people and make it make sense. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then something else we're doing this, mm -hmm. this year, we will be presenting our state of the city oh. and county together and yes, that's never been done so mm -hmm. we're excited about that in april yes april 17th i believe i don't mm -hmm. want to give a date so yeah. april let's say april <laughs> at the chamber at lunch. the chamber luncheon so we'll pre be presenting what uh, occurred in 2017 and then talking about uh, our goals and objectives for 2018 so we mm -hmm. will be discussing those so again it's been my honor thank you and my pleasure yes ma'am um, thank uh, you chatting with you today mm -hmm. and you know, we are always joined at the hip on an initiative. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I will see you soon. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Thank God. you for having me. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. This has been another episode of Clearly. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.